We thought it was going to be like. They got the good seat. <laughs> <laughs> Centauri, you can make them sound like anything you would like to sound like. And uh, it struck me at that moment that no reviewer would ever be able to say I was doing a bad Centauri. <laughs> I could make that up. I made the action up. So that fueled me to do whatever I wanted to do with it. I took a little of my my uh, uh, Slovakian grandmother, her sound, uh, probably a little Bella Lugosi. I had little, you know, fangs that I, that I saw in the picture that they had. Uh, so. <laughs> okay. Uh, I don't just made it up out of that. I was going to Ireland excessively enough of time in my life at that point to uh, 
chasing you know Catholic girls in here, <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and, and so I tried to put a little Irish rhythm and stuff. And so I just made the accent up, and I guess you tried to do the accent, didn't you, or not? No, no. The only thing um, when I first did the first episode, I had the um, teeth, but um, oh, my you were as mine were custom teeth. They just went through the like the oh. gag store and shoved the plastic on them. <laughs> And they said, here, try these. I think they'll work. Um, but, uh, uh, you know, it, it, I couldn't understand a word I was saying. You know, so, I'm not for the you. You know, like, and I said, that's not going to work. So, um, I just I just have the eyebrows and the hair. And, you know, I, but shouldn't you know, just like in, a, in America be uh, different accents? And, mm -hmm. You're certainly on the planet. I mean, that's the Joel. Right. Stephen, uh, right after Beer kills the emperor, he starts drinking and stuff. How did you get into that? Because Beer was so innocent and stuff. Yeah. And you could just see how devastating he was. How did you get into that? The mode of drinking and being drunk and everything? Yeah. <laughs> just like, <laughs> just, did you not see that? <laughs> I can't believe I threw up on Dean Warner. <laughs> I, well, I said I can't believe I threw up in front of Dean Warner. And Peter Riegert says, uh, Kent, you threw, you threw up on Dean Warner. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you're, you're, you're a part of in life. I'm really not. <laughs> <laughs> um. Obviously now, nearly 20 years later, you guys have worked so long together that you've got fantastic rapport and chemistry, and it's felt that way since day one. Now, we already heard the story of how you auditioned for the part, but I want to hear, when did you guys first meet and start figuring out how you're going to work together? What, so no, we were just talking about it. Walking here, we were talking about when we first met. Well, I wasn't following you when you were walking here. <laughs> Well, um, we were both on NBC shows, and I think it was on a wonderful show, groundbreaking show called Blues. Uh, I was on the uh, show called uh, St. Elsewhere. Mm -hmm. and, uh, both NBN shows. Yeah. Very powerful. Right. And um, they asked us, NBC asked us to, separately, not together, <laughs> asked us to go to something in Minneapolis, Minnesota, called the Fire and Ice Festival. And uh, I went there and he was there and we were, it was like 19 degrees below zero and I think, why the hell did I do this? You know? It was like right after the New Year's. Like it was freezing and what it is, it's a festival of ice sculptures and they, they, you know, people compete like American Idol of ice sculptures. Yeah. <laughs> and so we were on floats or something like that. <laughs> and, uh, and I met Peter, I didn't know nothing, you know. Um, I saw him. <laughs> we just met, we hit it off, and um, he was dating his wife at the, <laughs> at the time, and, you know, and I had two kids already, and uh, that's how we met, and then um, we worked on Battle on Five, and I was telling him this earlier, but I, I gotta say, I, I don't want to gush the actors or anything, but, um, oh, gosh. Oh, go ahead. No, no, you know, there, there's, there, everybody, you know, there's, there's, there's good actors on the show and everything, but there, there were a couple of actors that I, I don't even know if you guys can appreciate how good they are. Um, one is Peter, and the other one was Andreas, you know, and yeah. I, 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 you know, I'm a director and producer, and I, and my son actually has, has used Peter. I, I call Peter, you know, if you had a baseball team, Peter could play first base, he could play left field, he could play shortstop. You know, I call him a utility actor. You say, Peter, this scene you're going to be a homeless man who's been beaten up and you're begging for your life. Peter, now you're going to do the guy beating the homeless man. <laughs> 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 He's on track <laughs> I directed a film, he had a small part, and I directed a film 
There was a cart it was a live action version of a cartoon called Baby Huey, right? And he places yeah. you know how parents are coaching little league teams and they get too into the game and everything? Oh, yeah. and that's what he played. And I got in trouble with the producers because I I Dieter's one scene was now like twenty minutes long. <laughs> <laughs> This guy on camera so much. I said he's hysterically funny. He says, "Steve, I got the, the the children's movie is three hours." <laughs> you know, we, we met in Minneapolis, as he said. But when we met on the, the, the I mean, I, I'm surprised we, we, were, we were saying on the way over there we didn't meet him on the box because say I'm for just we, you know we were fairly in close proximity. We weren't that far. It's a very but, small lot. Yeah, it's a tiny lot, and we could have run into it. It was us in the show state, St. Elsewhere. New Heart. New Heart, and 30 something. And that's it. Yeah, and, uh, and White Shadow before that. Remember that little show, White Shadow? Yeah. And so I'm surprised we didn't run into each other, but when we met on that little spot, we really did start to act together really easily. Don't you think that's true? Yeah. You know, part of it has to do with the fact that, yeah, that, that Stephen has sort of a, a director's eye. So you feel like, uh, you know, you're, uh, I mean, I wanted to be good for Stephen because, you know, I mean, uh, he's a good actor. I admire his work. And, um, you know, so I think we brought out the best in each other, right? Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah whatever else. It was what it was. And we also, it was a complete, uh, you know, uh, a few, all we did is laugh at one point. By the time we the third season, we would just giggle like little girls. <laughs> <laughs> high school boys, you know, just getting in trouble with the teacher. And they just, you know, they got mad at us. Because we would just slam and laugh at this entire opera scene. <laughs> <laughs> and we could not get through that. <laughs> anyway, I don't even think I can do that. What was it like working with Ed Washer? Me? Provoking you. What was it like working with Ed Washer? I, um, you know, when, when, when Ed first came on the show, um, he was... Like kind of a, I think he was a relatively new actor. I don't know how much he had done, but he was a pretty nervous guy when he was working for him. And, I, and it took a while for him to uh, to relax enough to get into the work. So so there was a process that went on. I mean, I really I enjoyed it, and I don't know whether he enjoyed it at first. I think he was some, you know. But we had good directors. There was a, a director named Janet Greek who I liked, and she was great. She helped Ed a lot, and it's not like he needed help, but he. You know, I think it, he just felt the weight of the part and all that. And that, that was an important character. He knew it. There, there was a turn actually happening for all of us. Like, wow, who is this guy? What is this? What do you want stuff and all that, right? So, but he was, you know, he's a great guy. And uh, you know, I, I love working with him. It was great. So I enjoyed it. You know, I, I like working with him too, but, you know, he got a little paranoid with me. because you know, every time I see him, you know, I, I say, hi, Ed. <laughs> Steve is doing this gesture all the time. The stuff with Wood was great, though. Yes? Okay. Oh, go ahead. You have a favorite scene that uh, the two of you get yeah. What? Yeah. So many. Yeah. Is this song from the No, it's better than last night. It's better than last night. Yeah. I like, I mean, you know, the truth of the matter is, I, 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 and I, I, people don't really believe this, but I, I've never really seen an episode of Avalon 5. Uh, so I've never seen it. So I, was, I haven't seen much of our work, so I see stuff on YouTube. And I love uh, the stuff on YouTube, then what, you know, the cats sing, what is that, uh, you know, uh, huh? Nibble to Zep, yeah, right? You know, it's a perfect uh, feet, nothing like that, it's over, right? <laughs> yeah, I already turned it up. So I like that, and, and what other scenes? We, we had the, the scene where we, one of us knew that one was going to die first. We were both really paranoid about that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes. That's right. And then I, I couldn't pronounce a bond. Oh, that's one of my favorite. That's one of my favorite kind of moments. I mean, that's, that was a real moment. Stephen had a line. Uh, the line was, oh, so that's what this is about. So that's what this is about. 
And, and I had to just stand with an over the shoulder shot, so just over me onto him. And he said, the first time he did it, he said, oh, so this is what that was about. And then the, the girl who's off watching the script said, no, so this is what that was about. And so he said, oh, so that's what that's about. <laughs> <laughs> no, so this is what that's about. And then Stephen did it again, he said, so that's what that's about. <laughs> he said, no, this is what that's about. <laughs> You know, she was a real stickler about getting the word right, you know? So this is what this is. So that was that. And then he, you know, they would each other back. Finally, he got it. And the moment he got it, I, I, I'm shaking from laughing. <laughs> and, and, and we gotta do it again now. <laughs> it was a great moment, yeah. So this is what that's about. Yeah. Uh, you had mentioned uh, the one person you didn't particularly care about this. Is there any memorable crew people that uh, crew people? Yeah, that either really you know they did you really like you uh, want to work with or or really uh, plenty of them. Yeah. yeah, my favorite person in the world since you know I like to eat was the craft service guy. Okay. <laughs> uh, I love the director of photography. Uh, his name is John Flynn, and. You know, it looks great. It doesn't look old at all. But he shot. He's a director of photography of a gun stuff. Oh, wow. As a director, I got to tell you one of my favorite stories. As a director, and I was nervous because my first time directing Babylon Five, and uh, and I said, uh, John, I want this whatever the shot. He just comes up to me, not wanting to embarrass me. Oh, I've heard this. And he talked, I've done like John talked like this because he had an accident. Right. It wasn't a piece of not being stuck <laughs> um, uh, he, he just came up to me and goes, uh, you're not going to like what you see. He <laughs> went about your way. So I changed the shot. I mean, he was great. He just, he, he had my back. And, you know, just wonderful. Um, I have a fun story. He was the uh, director of photography, or was the camera operator, and then the director of photography on Hill Street. So we had a history with each other, and 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 when he always says he's got your back, that's really what he he did for me and for everybody, I guess. But I would finish a take, and John would be behind the camera, someone else, and he'd go like this. Doing <laughs> <laughs> another one was great. He was, he was really, you know, he just give me that. And he is the person who I always tell the story. Here's the, and you can say, tell me what episode it is. Rolando watches the Narn homework get bombed. Yeah. Um, What's the name of that episode? You know, whatever. And um, John took me for that shot of standing at the window and put me on a on a platform all by myself. He said he thought it would be great to isolate me for a time before the, the shot. I mean, this is great direction actually. And he knew that I was a social guy. I really like. I really do like to chat and fool around a lot on the set. But he said he really wanted to make me put me alone. So he took a platform like this. I was standing on, and it was about ten feet high. He put me on and just left me up there for a long time. He said, just think about what this, this scene is about. And I always thought that was a great uh, move because it put Londo, it put me in the place of this giant alone. I, I have done this. You know, stand at the window and watch what you have done. Now look at it. It was just a great direction. That's my John Flynn story. So he, he, was, he was great. I, there, there, there was a, um, you know, there was a lot of good people. Uh, John, uh, Peter Kowalski was a great. Oh yeah. yeah I got our camera. You know, it's like, you know, you you know, you know, the, the makeup people. <laughs> yeah. You, you you have to, it's almost like a marriage. You have to become, you know, get along with them because you're with them so many hours. You know, especially here, you know, not so much. But, you know, the, the crew was pretty cohesive. I don't, I can't remember any arguments about I'm a crew or anything. I had an actor, the director one time, and I had a long shot walking down the hallway. It was three actors. Walking down the hallway, and I went up to uh, the one actor had all the lines basically, and uh, so uh, I wanted to do one on a steady camera. And I'm going down the hallways and everything, and this particular actor would, would he'd say a line and then he pause, and you know, so a, a one and a half minute scene was taking like two and a half minutes, and it just was dragging. And I went up to the actor and said, you know, I always start with my actor, my director, 
We start sending positive. I love what you're doing. Well, let's change it. <laughs> <laughs> just pick up the pace a little bit, you know, just make it you know, snap a little bit more. And the, the actor said, absolutely not. <laughs> and I said, oh, wow. Yeah. But my director's kind of on. Uh, this is interesting. What do you think I did to remedy the situation? I got what I wanted. How did, how did I do that? Make the camera go back faster. What? Make the camera go back faster so the guy keep up with me. No. Okay. Make the other guy say the lines. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, no idea. That was, that's a scary Well, thing. what I did was I had to, instead of doing it in one, I had to do a cutaway uh, to the other two actors reacting to what he was saying. Okay. So when he came to a big pause, you know, I would come in the other actor and all of a sudden his pause was gone. So after the show aired, he came up to me and he said, see, I told you I was right about that. <laughs> I said, you know what? Absolutely were. I was so afraid of you to, you know, hold your brow. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, so Peter, um, you're talking about the cinematography for that other shot. Yes. The other day, of course, prepared for this, I've watched the whole thing over a little bit. And it was going back to the episode where you find out that it's uh, it's not, it was the replay that had had the, the woman killed. At the end of the time. Yeah, and, and when you smashed up the room, yes. and the cinematographer for that, I actually had to go look up the director and start talking about who they were, because the camera would spin around you as, as, as you did that scene, and that was kind of, I, I, I had seen this a million times, and the a few weeks ago it just caught me. No, he, he held the camera. It, you and, know, and the way we did it, it was. For me, it was like I hadn't really ever, ever seen that. It was his record. Uh, but it, the camera spun around you as you like just you know exploded. And it was just so powerful. I just, and it just it's interesting that, that you bring that up, and, and I'll tell you what my perception of it was because it was just done in a room about as big as this, right? And and it was. Ultimately, I don't remember who directed it either, but Peter Kowalski, the guy I mentioned, was our camera operator. So he had the steady cam on his shoulder, or, or the camera on his shoulder. And he had to do, I was doing this choreography with him, but he had to do a choreography too. It was so great to watch. When I think of it, what I'm watching is this camera operator moving around the room, but with the camera on, you know, and, but he's doing everything, I, as they say, you know, Fred Astaire and Ginger Rogers, he did everything. He yeah. did backwards with high heels. This guy didn't have high heels on, but um, he did every. He was he was basically doing my choreography for the scene, but he was doing it all backwards. It was great to watch, and, and the effect is pretty good. You know, we, we we only did one or two takes of it, but he was really amazing to watch go backwards and carry the camera. And that was part of my second part of the question was how many did it take because that had to be way too powerful to keep recreating. It wasn't about the emotional stuff. I mean, you know, really, it was it was about the fact that it was a very complex shot and it was hard to get. Well, and the camera weighs about 60 pounds. It was all the steady cam to And hard to keep on, right? He would miss stuff. Yeah, that's right. It takes practice and stuff. I've actually done that shot in another film, and uh, it's very difficult. And you've done, I think the trick is not to hide the lights. You know, you're trying to get the lights. Yeah. That's, that's but in the studios, it's not as bad as you're up high. That's all right. But I was on location. Right? Yeah. Also, uh, I just want to say, Peter, all the action and all the serious scenes, my two favorite scenes in all of Babylon 5 are the ones you're chasing the cockroach around the room. The look of victory on your face when you're about to kill him. You utter exasperation, you realize it's a different one. <laughs> <laughs> Under answer stuck in the elevator. Oh, no, 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 and you know, I'm in the elevator, and I'm you know, I'm nervous about around him, you know, the character, and we're in the elevator, and I'm just you know, I'm trying to avoid his eyes, and he takes out a knife, and I don't know what the hell he's going to do with the knife, and he cuts his hand, and every drop of blood he goes dead, dead, dead. We get to see him, and they go cut, and I went, I'm so sorry. <laughs> Andreas said, get away already. <laughs> <laughs> They're dead already. <laughs> you know, Mia and I were talking.
talking last night at dinner about Andrea, you know, and of course we miss him because he was our friend, but, you know, Steve talked about what a <laughs> terrific actor was. He had a, a, a kind of double quality, uh, a, a, you know, he, uh, first of all, he was, uh, a part of him was very serious about the work and very into it and do a great job, but he was amazingly loose as an actor, too. He would just, um, he could, he was just loose in front of the camera and cover him. He was a loose cannon. He would, you didn't know what he was going to do, or, uh, and that, that, you know, that, that was just so effective to have. I mean, when we did that elevator scene, so much of that was made up. You know, we were playing a lot of just uh, emotion, so a lot of it was made up anyway, but he was so loose and had such a great time. That's what makes that a great scene, in a sense, you know. I just hold that position, but he, he was, he was uh, uh, you know, before he came to Babylon, I always try to remind people, he had a big career already. He was uh, with Peter Brooks' uh, theatrical troupe in, in England, and they were, you know, they were premier actors, and, premier, and he acted all over the world, in, front of the, you know, in Iran, in palaces, in, in Paris, in little villages in, uh, in Africa. He, he really was, uh, before he got to us, before we got him, he was a hot shot actor. I mean, you look at his work as the one armed band. Once we got him. Huh? Once we got him, we ruined him. <laughs> we fixed him good, didn't we, Steve? <laughs> um, anyway, he really was, you know, I, you, you got to look at his whole career and um, give him quite an actor. Um, what did you like and dislike about your character? What I about what, what do we like about our own characters? Yeah, Mondo and Beer. Which what did you like about them? What did you really like about them? The hardest thing about the, that I didn't like about Mondo or about playing Mondo was that he was uh, so energetic and it, he took he, he was he was so up all the time. You know, I mean, in a sense, he was he was like a ramped up guy. You know, and um, so. I just had to get ramped up all the time. You can't go in kind of light and easy and have a kind of casual day. Mondo doesn't have casual days. You know? <laughs> He's just not a casual character. So, uh, you know, I would have days that I didn't feel like I could keep up with the, the energy and all that. And you had fun. So I didn't like that about it. But there was very little else I didn't like. I mean, I had such great lines to say, and everybody talks about the arc. The arc was great. You know, they, they mentioned that, we mentioned that in the talk, and what's interesting is that in most television series, they don't do arcs, because it's easier to write. It's, it's easier for the producers and the writers to have, you know, the bad doctor, the, uh, you know, the cute next door neighbor, and they just write those characters all the time, and those, the stories come out easier. You're always the bad doctor. You're always the next door neighbor. You're a well, it's harder if those, all the characters are moving all the time to stay up with them. So Mondo had that too, so I like that. That's what I like best about it. What's that? Oh, <laughs> oh my golly. <laughs> 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 Ideal ladies. <laughs> Famine, pestilence, and death. <laughs> What I really liked about Londo, those kind of lines, you know, that he would say, you know, people do death by, yeah, cats, that's it, people do death by death. Yeah. 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 I, I really liked the character I played, and, um, so I, I didn't, there wasn't anything I didn't like about him, just being yelled at by him all the time. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, did you like that or you didn't like that? I did, you know, yeah. it, it, it's interesting, I, I was very nervous in general, you know, um, but, um, one of my favorite lines that he said to me was in the first season when I, I would, he would be excited about something and I would say, but you gotta think of something else. You're my what, what was your answer? You moon-faced assassin of joy. <laughs> So many scenes together that it was so, it was refreshing to have with other people too. One of my other favorite scenes that I had was just a very very casual scene at the um, bar with uh, oh, yeah. oh, yeah. uh, talking about our our bosses. It was amazing how Steve uh, Steven took the the, the the character and again you know this arc idea right. 
um, and how, how beer changed. I mean, if you think about that, if you look at who beer was here and who beer ended up here, the tribute to the writing and the tribute to him as an actor. He downplays himself as an actor, but the director too, but you know, it's a great work. What about the characterization of characters? What can you nail the character for? How you prepared? How you nailed those? You know, first of all, I don't think we nailed it. From I mean, maybe you did, but I, just, I feel like in the first season we were really. I was still searching, trying to find out who he was. I had a very strong idea in the pilot who he was, and I liked who he was in the pilot. But I never thought it was going to go to series. I thought I really did. I had done you know so many pilots. That I, my, my, my idea was, you know, do the pilot, it's a job for the summer, and that'll be the end of it. So I had very strong ideas about who Malara was in, the, in that very first pilot that we did. And I never thought it was going to be a series. So then the first. <laughs> so I, I felt like I was searching in the first season to find out who he was. And Joe's writing, you know, uh, good writing will do that, kind of leading you. And you just get like a, uh, you, just get a, you get like a dog on the scent, and you just start to find it, and then finally you start to follow it. So the writing was so good. Did you feel like you had fear from the from the beginning, or ever since I had this soap in my eye? <laughs> He's the only one not laughing. The guy. Who <laughs> So this guy calls me and he says, uh, I'm calling about your house right now. And I'm telling him how good the house is and everything. And I said, and, and what's your name? He says, John. I said, what, what's your last name, John? He says, Larry Keck. <laughs> I said, John Larry Keck from Night Party? He goes, yes. I said, John, you don't want to rent this house. <laughs> I said, it's Stephen first. <laughs> Isn't that weird? <laughs> John Larry Keck called to rent my house. <laughs> I love that he popped up in the truth to John just like that. <laughs> I want to get a bad reputation, right? Yeah. Yeah. The development of the Alpha Centauri book with the five year arc, how much of that came from your own ideas or was that mostly all from the writing? The uh, Alpha Centauri book, it's it, it really pretty much zero. Nothing came from it. From us. Those were all ideas that, you know, we were, we were kind of following, again, following Joe's, uh, he, and I said, he, last night, uh, 